Good morning, everybody. Morning is here, whether we are ready for it or not. It's time to get going. Still on the rush to get home. On the rush to get home. Is that how you say that? I need my coffee. We need to get home as fast as possible. So we're leaving here in about 15 minutes. I'm gonna continue getting myself ready and we'll hit the road. We're getting home today. Huh. You know, we're gonna have to have a chat with that ball of fire it's sleeping in. Been getting up later and later lately. There's old blue. Let's get going. Yards in about five hours, which will bring us eight, nine, 
9, 10, 11, 12, around 1 o'clock. So when we started this trip, I was saying between noon and 3, but I wanted to be closer to noon. So I'm pretty happy and pleased with the progress that we are on track. On I-29 North, the speed limit here is 75 miles an hour. I'm doing 65. I have a pickup truck just creeping past me right now, holding up a bit of traffic. He's probably doing about 66. someone would take so long to pass me when they are fully capable of doing the speed limit and getting past me in a more timely manner and not holding up people behind him in the left lane. I mean, with semi-trucks, I can understand that a lot of them are uh, governed. He's probably going to cut me off, too. They usually do that. But he definitely doesn't have a speed limiter on his private vehicle. What would be the reason to take so much time to get past me? I've always wondered that. This happens every now and then. And there is someone behind him that's waiting to do the speed limit. Yeah, he's coming in too close. Yeah, of course he is. So I'm going to go back over into this lane. I don't want to follow that close behind someone because that's not safe. Why, why do people do that? And they always cut you off. They always cut you off. There's nobody behind me right now, just so you know. So I don't know why, but you know, when you see somebody just creeping past you like that, it's like a 99.99% chance that they're going to turn back into the lane in front of you and cut you off. gas pedal, allergic to the speed limit or what, because, you know, I can't go any faster. They can. Because it doesn't only just put me at risk then, it puts them and their family and their vehicle at risk when they're that close in front of me. And that's not the case of me, that's not my fault that they're that close in front of me. I'm not tailgating them. They chose to put themselves in the danger zone and turn in front of me. When they didn't have to. They could have given it some gas, gotten further in front of me, or just waited till they were at a safe distance in front of me. That's why when that happens, like I let that one car that was behind him waiting for him get past, there was nobody else in the left lane behind that, that guy. So then I go into the left lane, but I'm not right behind him. It's either that or I hit the brakes. And then if there is traffic behind me, that's what I have to do, right? I have to hit the brakes and create that safe zone between him and me, which he violated. That means that all traffic behind me now has to hit their brakes. And that can cause, like, an accordion effect behind me. That can cause a traffic jam behind me. And if people aren't paying attention, like a lot of people aren't, well, it could cause accidents if they're not paying attention when traffic suddenly slows down. boggles the mind. I'm glad none of you watching this do that kind of thing. And if you're a passenger in a, in a vehicle where the driver is doing that, say something. Don't sit beside a truck on a highway. Get past them. The faster you get past them, the better. You never know when we're going to need that lane. There could be wildlife jumping out on the road in front of us. There could be someone on the shoulder up ahead. You don't know. That's my story. I'll see how many of you agree with me. I got back at 12.58, right on schedule. Got back to a sign that says, Drivers, we appreciate you. Well, that's nice. It's nice to come home to that. We appreciate you, too.
wouldn't have many loads to haul if you guys in the office weren't lining them up for me. Wouldn't have many paychecks if you guys weren't doing all the legwork, making sure all the money keeps flowing. So we appreciate you too in the office. But, you know, we are the ones out here away from our families for weeks at a time. So we appreciate the acknowledgement. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my paperwork in here. I gotta drop this trailer of trailers in the yard here take most of the securement off, leave enough securement so that the wind doesn't blow the trailers off, the trailer. Uh, uh, we don't want them falling off. They get easily damaged, so they have to be tied down uh, pretty tight, but in a certain way. I've got a kind of a, a special way that I do it that I've mastered it. I've never had one shift even a millimeter on me. So I'm gonna leave uh, uh, some securement on each trailer, leave the trailer out there where they can unload them on Monday, and, uh, and I'm gonna go home. One o'clock, so two, three, four, five, six. We have five and a half hours until our pictures are in St. Pierre, which is what, 20 minutes from Steinbach? 30 minutes from Steinbach? So we gotta be there by 6.15, we'll have to leave home by 5.45, which means in my head, we've gotta leave home by 5.30, so that we leave at 5.45. I'm gonna leave at 5.30, I'm gonna need like an hour to shower, clean myself up and everything, then bring us to 4.30. I need an hour here, so I'm gonna leave here by two, get to the shop by 2.30, get everything out of my truck, three, 3.30, get home, take that hour, it'll be 4.30. I should have an hour to sit down and eat something yet, uh, play with the kid a little bit, uh, with my son, and uh, say hi to the wife and everything, sit for maybe a little bit, we'll see. We'll see if I have time to sit. And then it'll be out the door in our fancy clothes. Gotta go take some, uh, gotta go take some pictures. And that's why this whole week has been such a rush, was to get back for these pictures. I didn't want it to be a waste, uh, my mom and dad uh, getting these uh, this photographer for us. Uh, I'm not sure what they're paying them, but you know, photographers, if they're good photographers, aren't always cheap. So I uh, wanted to make sure I was back and we made it, almost. We still got a few more steps to go, but we're done the home stretch now. We're just, uh, you know, finishing up, wrapping things up. So I gotta get going. Here's my trailer right beside me here. I left all the wheels winched down on both sides, so they're not going anywhere. I said Monday they're getting unloaded. It's a long weekend, Labor Day weekend this weekend, so it's actually Tuesday that they're getting unloaded, but they'll be safe and sound right there until then. And there we go. It was quite the week, as you saw. <laughs> Usually I can put a lot more effort into getting a few more shots and filming a few more things, but. Sometimes you just gotta hammer down as hard as you can. So you're probably a little bit tired there, old blue. I don't blame you. You got a long weekend now to rest up. I don't have a load leaving yet, but uh, I'm available on Wednesday. Old blue is gonna go in and get uh, serviced and pampered on Tuesday. So you got today, what is today? Today's Saturday and Sunday, Monday and Tuesday yet. Yeah, you'll be feeling 100% when we get you back on the road. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's it. Got everything I need. Do a little walk around to make sure that I've got everything. Everything looks good. Haven't forgotten anything. Emptied my cooler. Okay. That's it. That's a wrap for the week. Hey, Chevy. You're going to stay home, okay? You stay home? Yeah. No, no, no. You're going to stay here. You're, no, you can't come for the... I'm sorry. Not this time. Next time. Next time. All right, I'm all showered up. Cut my hair. Trim my beard. I'm all set, we're ready to go. Take some pictures. <laughs> He's very excited. Yeah. <laughs> we're here to take our pictures. Right there's my mom and dad. Is that Oma and Opa? Oh, he's distracted, he's got food now. <laughs> 
So yeah, here we are. We're in St. Pierre Joli, or better known as just St. Pierre. Fun fact, uh, when I was aged one to age four, I lived in this town, just down the road over there. <laughs> and that's the, the museum that they have here. That's a pretty cool building. There's lots of really neat spots around here for pictures, I guess. Look at this. We got here a little early because we're feeding Theo first. You know, I lived in this town, like I was saying, and I never knew this museum was here. So St. Pierre is a uh, French town. Or French is the uh, first language. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of French towns in southeast Manitoba. Where I'm from in Steinbach is uh, surrounded by French towns. They settled along the rivers first, and then we came in and settled the inland between the rivers. They got us surrounded. <laughs> so there's a lot of history here. A lot of really old buildings in these French towns. What do you think, buddy? This is where I lived when I was your age. Yeah, it wasn't too far. It was just a mile or so that way. Come on, Is that Tepper? We haven't put his fancy clothes on yet until he's finished eating. <laughs> it's bright orange, so. I did the same thing. I don't put my fancy shirt on until we're actually ready for pictures. Just in case. Just in case. Here's a big one. You want a big one? Let's go see what else is here. Okay, look at that. They got a little stage out over there. A bonfire pit here. A little trail through the woods there. That is so neat, you know, I never knew this was here. Huh. So cool. It's a lot of history in this town. Even more than in my town. I'm very proud of the history of our town. Even more history here. History goes back further here. This town was settled before Steinbeck. Quite a bit before Steinbeck, I think. But Steinbeck, we were we settled in 1874. I believe they were here in the 1600s. I'll probably find out today, though, since we're at the museum. <laughs> well, we're all done with our pictures and it, it went pretty smoothly, I think. As smoothly as it can with a one-year-old. Right? Yeah, there's a sign on that tree. I, I don't think that's part of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to go get ice cream. Come on. No, he, he just wants to walk. Got some good ones. Oh yeah. And she was a good photographer. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling them before over there, he didn't do too bad for a one-year-old. Yeah. Eh. But as well as can be expected. Try to tell know. a one-year-old to sit still. Yeah. See what happens. And she was a mom, so she understood. <laughs> we'll see how they turn out. I don't know when we'll get them. Probably in a few weeks. Well, that was quite the rush to get back. You can see I'm already back at work. One must always return to work. That is. Uh, it's the way the world turns. <laughs> I had a great weekend at home though. I'm filming this post Labor Day weekend. Uh, we're here in 2024. So I hope you guys had a great long weekend. Uh, this was obviously uh, posted a little bit after that weekend. Uh, this whole week in these vlogs 
was geared towards rushing home to get home for those family pictures and we've already got a few previews of them the photographer like th these photographers that are like that do this for a living are just like magicians when it comes to editing and taking these pictures and capturing the perfect image and like try try taking some good pictures of the one-year-old sometimes just tell them to sit still you know they could be the greatest kid in the world like our kid is great he's very well behaved he sleeps like on command almost at night it's easy to put him to bed give him his bottle bring him to his room we tell him we love him we say night night put him down he goes night night goes to sleep just like that same thing for his nap and he sleeps like four three to four hours for his nap every day too and he sleeps a full night he's been sleeping through the night since he was 12 weeks old so we know we have it pretty easy uh, and we're blessed with a uh, a very well behaved kid he's a uh, he's a little gem that one but uh, try getting him to sit just tell him to sit still because we just want to take some pictures no he wants to do anything but take those pictures Oh, so I was wondering like, oh man, we're not gonna get any good pictures. He's not gonna be looking at the camera or he's gonna be crying or he's gonna be like, have this pody face on his face or... No, actually the couple of previews that we got, she actually got to capture him with a smile. It's amazing how they do that. They just capture the perfect moment right in that like split second where he like, she's like, like making noises and she was making faces and sounds at him to try to get him to smile and pay attention to the camera. And in that split second, right when he's like, smiles just a bit click she takes the picture I don't know how they do it uh, you photographers are talented people but we, we have a couple of previews and they just turned out amazing so I'm really excited to see the rest of them uh, it's been a little while since we took family pictures uh, this is family pictures on my side so with my mom and dad my sisters my brother-in-law my nephews on on, on my side uh, and Brit and I and our family obviously so uh, it, it was fun a lot of fun and uh, you know St. Pierre is a beautiful little town a lot of history there I don't think it was actually settled in the 1600s I think it was settled in the early 1800s I don't know it was the French that settled there first uh, our my great 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 grandparents they or whatever line it was great great or great 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 grandparents came and settled in 1874 and I believe St. Pierre was they were settled along the river late 1700s early 1800s I think so it could be about, you know, three quarters of a century to a century before uh, we came and settled inland between the rivers because the French settled along the rivers because there's no roads back then, right? When we got here, it was a barren land. There was no roads. They used the rivers to settle along the rivers. The French, uh, called in Manitoba, uh, called Métis, they came from Quebec. They're sort of a blend between uh, European and indigenous. Uh, they're their own special people group in Manitoba. So they came from Quebec and they settled along the rivers because that's the only way you could get into Manitoba at that time was in through the rivers. And then when we got there, there was no roads, there was no like hospitals or fire stations or anything inland between the rivers. We, we had to, uh, it was all swamps mostly. They had to drain the swamps and then build farmland on there, right? And they called it virgin soil. Uh, there was the Mennonites, that's my heritage. Uh, the Mennonites came and they broke the soil. They broke virgin soil, soil that had never been seeded or planted before with uh, crops for people to eat so we could have food uh, but anyway so that was all through the 1800s so it's 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 awesome to see like it's cool to see the history in our area but then you go to one of their areas and they have like an extra almost century of history there yet which is super cool a lot happens in a century like think of like it's 2024 right now think of like from 1924 to 2024 a lot happened right a lot more happened in this century than the century before. But still, from 1800 to 1900, there's quite a bit of change as well, especially in North America, in Western Canada and the Western United States. I mean, before 1800, there was very few people settled out west, right? But in the 1800s, that's when uh, uh, the big uh, settlement and pine settler and pioneering, uh, you know, the Trail West happened and uh, in both Canada and the US and then the, the populations just sort of bloomed from there a lot of history happened in the 1800s in our area so it was cool to see I don't know I'm fascinated by history I don't know you have to know where you came from and why you're here you have to know how did this town start like you live in a town who founded it why did they found it you know I don't know 
Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. To each their own. Thanks for watching today, everybody, and thanks for watching this week. It's been a rushed week. I know my footage has been mostly just road footage, and uh, I... I'm like way behind on my editing now because I had to catch up because there was no time for anything. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Uh, after this, there's Labor Day weekend. So there's a couple of days that uh, might be missing. And then we'll get going on another trip, obviously, because here we are already. So I'll see you right here very soon in the future. Take care. Drive safe out there. I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey, become a member if you want to. You can get early access to my videos. Click the join now. Uh, button down below if you want to go the extra step if, you, if that's not for you totally cool the way you can support me then is leave a, a thumbs up and a comment down below and that helps too quite a bit actually i'll see you later